Hi there, this is Sam of Core Yoga, and thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to spend some time focusing on the muscles of the outer hips. The glute max, the glute min, and a little bit into the back of the hips, into the glute max. We're working these muscles to help build strength, to provide stability at the pelvis, to allow us to hold the pelvis nice and strong when we move whether we're on a bike and our um, legs are moving in circles or whether we're running and we're creating a ground reaction force with the earth. Essentially, we want to be strong and stable at our pelvis so our body can move efficiently and effectively on this real stable base. For this session, it's really useful to have a resistance band. It's just a piece of movie band that you can place around your legs if you don't have one of these, but you have a long one, you can tie a knot in it. If you don't have one at all, don't worry too much, just pretend it's there. Uh, it just will give us some resistance to feel against. Um, come join me on the mat. We're gonna start in child's pose, just to bring our attention into our bodies. So taking your knees as wide as your body really feels like it wants to uh, take them for now, just pop the band to one side and allow yourself to soften and settle down into the earth. So we have specific attention to the muscles of the hips today. So with that space in mind, draw your attention to your pelvis. And for now, allow the pelvis to feel heavy. Allow the muscles that surround the pelvis to feel soft. And our focus will be on the muscles of the outer hips, building strength in the space to help maintain good posture both up and down the chain. So as you take your next inhalation breath, make it deeper. And breathe the breath deep into the belly space. And as you exhale, soften and let it go. And continue to breathe like that. And as you breathe in and out of that belly space, be attentive to the space on the outside of your hips. Just starting to tune in to that space. Starting to fine tune our sensation, our proprioception. And then take one more deep belly breath. As you exhale, feel the belly draw away from the thighs and keep it a little engaged. Take a big breath wide into the ribs. And as you exhale, come up onto all fours. Before we start to really get into finding these muscles, we're just going to mobilize and move a little bit from the hips and the shoulders just to get the joints nicely oiled. So on all fours, inhale, drop the belly, open through the chest, look up. And exhale, push the floor away from you, tuck your chin. So in and out of cat-cow, this is cow as we inhale and open the chest. And this is cat as we push the floor away from us. Close your eyes for the next three rounds. As you inhale, feel the length in the front of the body. And as you exhale, feel the length in the back of the body. As you inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades a little towards one another. And as you exhale, separate those same shoulder blades. Lift the belly button to the spine. Then inhale, come back just to a neutral, comfortable space. Take the right leg out to the side, tuck under the left toes and bring the right arch in line with the left knee. From here, you're going to inhale, push the floor away from you, take your seat back as low as it goes. And as you exhale, come forward. So just uh, four more like that. Inhale, as you come back, feel the outer edge of the foot press into the floor. And exhale, bring it forward. Nice. 
Inhale, sit it back, getting a stretch into the sole of the left foot. Exhale, come forward. Inhale, feeling that stretch into the inner thigh space. And exhale, forward. And just take one more like this. Inhale, sit back. Feel the separation of the shoulder blades. Exhale, come forward. Bring your right knee, just place it underneath your right hip. Take the hands just a slight bit further forward. Tuck under the toes, lift up your hips. Downward facing dog. And in your down dog, just bend alternately, slowly, moving nice and easily. And just until your heel either taps or gets close to the floor, but it doesn't have to touch. And then come to stillness in your downward facing dog. Take a breath in. As you exhale, set the right foot forward and drop the left knee. And then from here, taking the right foot a little further forward than perhaps nor is normal for your body. Inhale, send the hips back and point the right toes towards the sky. And then exhale, walk yourself forward so that the knee tracks over the toes. Perhaps you might wanna bring blocks here to help you walk back and forward. It depends how your body feels. Then exhale, come forward. So use props where you need them. Inhale, we're getting into the hamstring of that right leg. Exhale, we're getting into the hip flexor of that left leg. Coming all the way back, we're getting into the plantar fascia of that left foot. And coming all the way forward, we're getting into the muscle in the front and uh, the back of the um, front calf. One more coming all the way back as you inhale. And all the way forward as you exhale. And then inhale, step back, downward facing dog. And exhale, turn the heels in and the toes out. And once again, you're going to walk your dog, but now you're turning your hips one way and turning your hips the other way. So before we really fine tune the activation and the strengthening of these muscles, we're just getting a little movement. We're waking up, we're warming up the muscles of the outer hips and we're joining that with waking up and warming up the muscles in the front and the back of the hips because everything is connected come back to the center bring your knees to the floor inhale open the chest look up to the sky exhale push the floor away from you inhale come to all fours regular and um, flat back and then exhale, take the left leg out to the side. So the left outer edge of the foot's on the floor, tuck under the right toes. Inhale, sit the hips back. And exhale, come forward. Inhale, just go back as far as your body allows. So it might be a few centimeters, it might be more. As you inhale to come back, keep the outer edge of that left foot grounded into the earth. And as you come forward, feeling that separation of the shoulder blades, the inhale sitting back, and exhale coming forwards and being in no rush. When we move in a rush, we move quickly, we move without the muscles really giving us that sensation and that feedback. From here, bring the leg back to the center. The hands a little further forward, tuck under your toes. Downward facing dog. This time, inhale, come forward to high plank. Exhale, lift the hips downward facing. Inhale, come forward to high plank. Exhale to down dog. One more as you come forward to high plank, feel the separation of those shoulder blades. And then exhale, downward facing dog. The inhale, drop the knees to the floor. Step the left foot forward. Take it a little further forward than normal. And then inhale, send the hips back to the heels, left toe towards the sky. Exhale, come forward a little further forward than normal. 
As you inhale to come back, you come back as far as your body allows. And remember that you can add blocks here to help bring the chest a little higher, to help it feel more comfortable at the hips and the pelvis if it's tight around there. You're moving mindfully and you're moving with your breath. As you exhale your next breath, you come further forward than normal. And then inhale, step that left foot back, down facing dog. This time, exhale, walk the feet towards the hands. Inhale, bring the hands to the hips and come all the way to stand. From here, take your strap, your band. Then we're gonna bring the band around the thighs. So I'm going to position it about midway up the thigh. So just pop your band on and bring it to the thighs. And then the next few exercises we're going to do with this band here. And you'll feel in the band, just standing right now, that the band's pulling the legs in because of the resistance of the band. So we just want to learn to push against that resistance. So we don't allow them to come in. We're pushing against that resistance to feel the outer hips. Come down back onto all fours. So we'll start on the floor and we'll work some down dog. We'll work some work on all fours. Build into some plank and some locus. And then we'll get moving with the breath in a little bit of a flow. So essentially feeling that same sense of separation of shoulder blades that you felt earlier on when we were doing angry cat. It's just less aggressive. Continuing the length of the neck, feel the muscles of the lower belly and lift them up towards the spine. So everything's nice and connected. And then from here, as you inhale, extend your right leg back behind you and the toe is on the floor. And feel the resistance of the back. Feel your right butt cheek, give it a squeeze. Push the floor away from you and raise your right toe off the floor. Now notice I'm not moving it high. Bring your hands to the front of your ribs. If your ribs are sticking out into the hands and your back is arched, we're in the wrong place. We want to keep our hips and our ribs nice and close to each other. And then from here, turn the toes out and the heel in. And feel how that changes the sensation in your outer hip. Hold it there for one more breath, maintaining this activation in the front of the belly. And then exhale, let it all go. Tuck under the toes, lift up the hips, downward facing dog. So be still in your down dog now. Feel the hands and push the floor away from you. A little bit soften the knees. Lift the sit bones a little higher to the sky and feel that lower belly space, hug it back. And then feeling the band around the thighs, like you're trying to prevent the band from allowing the knees to drop in. And just push the thighs into the resistance of the band. Take a breath in and then exhale, come all the way back to all fours. From here, separate the shoulder blades and feel that connection. Belly is strong, ribs are knitted into the midline. And then from here, just simply extending your left leg behind you. If you look at the camera, look at the screen, notice when I did this, I didn't arch my back. I went nowhere near that cow position. I'm keeping that connection of that core at the front to allow myself to strengthen the core at the back. So this in itself is glute max right now. Press the floor away from you, squeeze your left butt cheek to lift your left leg. But keep all of this connected. So I'm not moving much, but this is hard work. This is strong work. And then from there, slowly, externally rotate, so turn your toes out and your heel in. Now you'll feel that sensation move into the outer hip, into your glute max, glute mid. Those stabilizers that are also external rotators of the uh, femur bone. 
And then from there, bring it all the way back to the center. Tuck under the toes, lift up the hips, downward facing dog. So this time, feeling that sense that you're pushing against the resistance of the band as you're keeping it as you travel forward, as you inhale into your high plank. Exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Inhale, feel that resistance, keep it, high plank. Exhale, down dog. One more inhale, keep that resistance. Exhale, down the dog. Inhale, bring the knees to the floor. Exhale, separate the shoulder blades. Inhale, bring the toe to the floor, but extend the right leg. And then exhale, squeeze the bum, lift that right foot. This time, inhale, just simply move that right leg out on a diagonal. And then hold it there. We're getting a little bit more into the outer hips, into the abductors, but are still working these outer hip glute muscles. And then bringing it back to the center. Lift up your hips, downward facing dog. Inhale a breath here. Exhale all fours. Inhale. Exhale, extend the left leg. Inhale, squeeze the left butt cheek. Raise the left foot. So your right foot can have toes tucked under or on top of the foot flat. It's totally cool. What we want to avoid is arching through the back. Take the left leg out to the left diagonal. So if we're maintaining a rhythm of breath and we're being really super mindful of what happens in the muscles around these hips. So we're working really hard from here, bring it back to the center. What I'm trying to say is if we're not feeling it, then perhaps we need to reassess what we're doing and that sense of activation in the muscles. And just walking your dog nicely here, and then turning the heels in and the toes out and giving it a little walk. And then slowly walk your feet towards the front of the mat. From here, both feet are facing forward, soften the knees, relax the back of the head. Close the eyes, maybe it'll be helpful to grab your elbows. So we're getting a little bit of length into the muscles along the spine, into the back of the body, the back of the hamstrings. Then feel as you close your eyes that resistance band. And feel the thighs just press into that resistance band a bit. And then allow the resistance band to hug the knees in, right? So you feel what is incorrect. Very often as a runner, this is where the knees go if these hip muscles aren't working. And that pulls on this big piece of fascia in the outer hip. So press the floor away from you and separate and feel those outer hip muscles. Let it go, feel what feels wrong. Often, as a cyclist, this is where my knees go as I pedal my right foot forward, my knee might track in. And again, that's that lack of control in the outer hips. So push the floor away from you and separate that, feel that sensation. Press the hands into the shins, Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky, feel that resistance. Exhale, palms together in the heart space. So building on this. Inhale, reach up, lift up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees, feel the resistance of the band. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, hands down and step or walk back to find a plank. Feel the outer hips in that plank as you inhale. And then exhale, lower your knees, your thighs, your belly down to the floor. Bring the forehead down and the hands behind you. 
Palms are facing the floor, palms are down on the floor. And a little bit we feel like we're gripping the mat with our fingertips. Then without making anything heavier in the front of the pelvis, squeeze the right butt cheek and raise the right leg. And then hold it there, this time the toes are pointed. You're feeling the muscles in the back of the hips, in the back of the um, thighs. And then hold it as is and just take that leg out on the slight diagonal until you feel the outer hip start to fire up. Keep that there. And then exhale, bring it back. Same thing on the other side. Inhale, squeeze the left glute without making anything heavier at the hips. Lift the left leg. So what I'm trying to say is that pelvis is not moving. It's not pressing into the floor. Nothing gets heavier. We're just lifting as high as the body will allow. And then slowly and mindfully, we take that left leg out on the left diagonal. And we're feeling now that trans. Um, transmission of that work into the outer side of the pelvis. Good. Then come all the way back to the center. Hands either side of your chest. Tuck under your toes. As you exhale, one big press back into plank. Hold your plank, take an inhalation breath. Exhale, reach the right leg out to the side and tap the floor. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, reach the left leg out to the side, and inhale, bring it back. One more each side. Exhale to the side, nothing moves in the pelvis. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale the other way, and inhale to return. Exhale, lift the hips. Walk your feet towards your hands. Inhale, press into the hands and halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart space. Close off your eyes. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Feel the resistance of the band as you inhale back to chair. And then exhale back to forward fold, feeling the resistance of the band. Inhale to chair, this time hold it here. Keep that sensation in the outer hips, that sense of grounding through the feet and that pulling up through the lower belly. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to your heart space. Press the left foot into the floor. So that will release the right foot and you'll feel this left hip now starting to fire up. And then as you exhale your next breath, take the right leg out to the side and tap the floor. And then inhale, bring it back to the center. Now it goes out on the right diagonal as you exhale. And then inhale it back to the center. And then it goes behind you as you exhale. And then inhale back to the center. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, palms together in the heart space. Inhale, press the right foot into the floor. As you push down with the right foot, feel that hip, take control. And if you don't feel that hip take control, give it a squeeze. Keep everything engaged as you inhale, take that left leg out to the side. And then exhale, bring it back to the center. From here, inhale out to the left diagonal. And then exhale back to the center. Right side stays as is. Inhale. And exhale, bring it back to the center. Take a breath in. And then exhale, forward fold, let it go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. As you stay here in your forward fold, just take the band off and just pop it to one side. 
And then inhale, press the floor away from you with your feet, meet your hands to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart space, close the eyes. Now you've lost the band, but you haven't lost that sensation. You can now imagine the band around those thighs and push against that resistance in the band. That in itself will fire up these outer hip muscles for us. Take a breath in, we move into lunges, reach the hands up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift, a moment to connect breath. Exhale, right leg back, right knee to the floor. Inhale, reach the hands up and look up. Exhale, hands down, downward facing dog. As you get into your downward dog, maintain the rhythm of breath. Feel that resistance band even though it's not there and push that sensation against the thighs, against that sensation. And then inhale, travel forwards to high plank. Exhale, knees, thighs and belly down to the floor. Hands behind you, palms to the floor. Inside edges of the feet together. But then without creating more heaviness at the pelvis, inhale, just lift the legs. Exhale, hold it here. Inhale, here. Exhale, let it go. Hands by your side. Downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg to the sky. Exhale, right foot steps forward, left knee down. Inhale, reach the hands up and look up. Exhale, hands down, left foot to join the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach up, lift up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. Same thing, other side. Inhale, moving for the length of the breath. Exhale, left foot back, left knee down. Inhale, reach the hands, look up. Exhale, hands down, downward facing dog. Inhale, here, feel that imagined resistance. Exhale, hold it here. Keep that resistance as you inhale to high plank. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Inner edges of the feet together, hands down. Inhale, raise the head and the shoulders this time. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise your left leg to the sky, feel that left glute. Exhale, set the left foot forward, drop the right knee. Inhale, reach your hands up and look up. Exhale, hands down. Set the right foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands up and look up. Exhale, palms together, close the eyes. Feel the imaginary resistance band. Keep that sensation as you inhale, lift up. As you exhale, fold forwards. As you inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, set the right foot back, keep the right knee lifted. Inhale, come up into your high lunge. And then exhale, bring the palms together in the heart space and make the stance a little shorter than normal. Lift up the back heel, then bring the right hand to your right butt cheek. Give it a squeeze. Squeeze that right butt cheek so you can feel it active in your hand, and then bring your palms back to the heart space. Then from there, as you exhale, bend the right knee, keep that right glute active. Inhale, release the hands and reach them up to the sky. Exhale, palms together in the heart space, straighten both legs. Inhale, bend both the knees, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, straighten both legs, palms to the heart space. One more, inhale, reach up, straighten, sorry, bend. Exhale, palms together, straighten. Inhale, bring your hands to the floor. 
Set the right foot a little further back and bring the left foot right in the center of the mat. Ground the outer edge of the back foot. Warrior two. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, straighten your left leg. So from here with your hands on those bony parts of the hips, noticing if the left hip is lower than the right. And if it is, lift it up. And when you lift it up in line with the right, notice how, oh, it's so much easier to activate this muscle in the outer hip. So give it a squeeze. Push the back foot into the floor. Lift the arch of the back foot. So we're grounding down and lifting up. Outer seam grounding down, inner seam lifting up. Outer hip on fire. And then simply bend the left knee. Keeping everything as is. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, hold it here. A couple more breaths. Feel that sensation of the hips. But feel the lightness and the lift of the upper body. Take a breath in. As you exhale, windmill the hands. Set the left foot back. Downward facing dog. Inhale here, exhale here, and then inhale, travel the shoulders forward, high plank, exhale, lower all the way to the floor, inhale, locust inner edges of the feet together, exhale, downward facing dog, take a breath in, as you exhale, set the right foot forward. Inhale into your high lunge. Exhale, palms together in the heart space. Step the back foot a little further forward than normal. That will allow us now to bend our left knee a little more. Bring your left hand to your left butt cheek and give it a squeeze. Hold that active left butt cheek as you take an inhalation breath. Bend the knees and reach the hands up to the sky. Then exhale all the way back to the center. Keep that left glute engaged. Inhale, bend that left knee. Exhale, straighten both the legs. Inhale, last one. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend the knee. Bring the hands to the floor. Bring the right foot to the center of the mat. Ground the outer edge of the back foot. Warrior two. Feel that sense of reach through the fingertips. Then bring your hands to your hips. I'm going to shimmy around so that you can see my pelvis. Right foot is now forward. If the right hip is dropping towards the floor, lift the right hip up so it's in line with the left. And then notice how that makes it much more easy to activate that outer hip muscle. Press the outer edge of the left foot down. Lift the left arch. Feel that grounding down in the outer seam, that lifting up in the inner seam. Keep everything as is. We forgot to straighten the leg. Well done. <laughs> you did all that with a, a bare as bent knee. Bend the knee, reach the hands. Warrior two. Couple of breaths here. Feel that grounding, that connection down into the earth with your feet. And feel that sense of lift and lightness through the body. As you exhale, remove your hands. Step the right foot back to the back of the mat. Downward facing dog. Inhale, travel forwards to high plank. Exhale, lower all the way down to the floor. Inhale, locust in a seam of the feet together. Exhale. Downward facing dog. From here, inhale, raise the right leg to the sky. Exhale, step the right foot forward. Look at the back heel. Turn and ground the back foot. Press both feet into the floor and inhale into your warrior one. This time, bring your hands to your hips and straighten both legs again. Your hips facing the left diagonal corner of the mat rather than the front of the mat. The chest parallel with the hips. Then push the back foot into the floor. With your left hand, feel your outer hip. Engage that outer hip. Keep all of that 
bend the right knee. Keep all of that and inhale, reach the hands up to the sky. Gaze between the thumbs. Feel that connection down into the earth with the outer seam of the left leg. That lift up with the inner seam of the left leg. Take one more breath. And as you exhale, straighten your right leg, bring your hands to your hips. Take your right foot a little further out to the side, turn the hips towards the front of the mat and fold forwards. So fold forwards either to bring your hands either side of your, onto your shin or the hands either side of your shin towards the floor. Press the floor away from you with your feet. Feel that sense of softness as you breathe out. Inhaling, creating length, and exhaling, letting it go. And then from here, as you inhale, bring your hands to the top of the mat, lift up the back toe, and bring the back knee down to the floor. Turn the right foot out so it's at 90 degrees. So we just turn the foot out a little bit. If this feels too much in the hips, just take the leg further down the mat, towards the end of the mat. And with your left hand, just take it a little further forward, ahead of your left shoulder. So first of all, right fingertips to the floor, push back in the left heel, so you're in like a half funny plank lunge type position. Look at the back foot, roll it, turn it onto the outer edge, and then press the floor away from you and lift the right hand to the sky. As you exhale, slowly drop your left hip towards the floor and the right hand towards your inner thigh. As you inhale, push the floor away from you and reach the right hand back up to the sky. Good, continue like that. So we exhale here, lengthen the outer hip. And then we inhale, bring strength back to it again. And all the way back down as we exhale and all the way back up as we inhale. And then exhale, bring the right hand to the mat, step back, downward facing dog. Either stay here, take a vinyasa with locust, or come down to child's pose for a couple of breaths. Feel that sense of rhythm and breath, stay within the body. As we continue to the other side, Bring yourself back to downward facing dog if you took child's pose. And then inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, left foot steps forward. Look at the right foot, turn it 45 degrees. Look at the right corner of the mat. Inhale, come all the way up. Hips are facing the right corner of the mat. Bring your hands to your hips. Straighten your left leg. Feel your right leg. Push it down into the floor. As you push the floor away from you, feel that outer hip start to fire up. Those are the muscles we're continually, continually finding accessing, continually strengthening. So that in any movement plane, they're able to find that fire. Then soften that um, left knee. Inhale, reach your hands up. Warrior one with the chest and the hips to the right corner of the mat. Push the outer edge of the right foot down. Pull the inner edge of the right thigh up. Feel that sense of two-way action. We go down the outer side and up the inner side. And then from there, as you exhale, bring your hands to the floor. Lift up the back toe. Drop the back knee to the floor. Turn the left foot so it's at 90 degrees. Move it down the mat if that's helpful for your body. Bring the right hand a little ahead of the right shoulder. Left fingertips on the floor, push back in the right heel. Look at the right foot where it is, just turn it on its edge. And then inhale, push the floor away from you, lift your left hand to the sky. Exhale, drop those right, that right hip down towards the floor and then left hand to the inner thigh. As you inhale, you're pushing the floor away from you to lift up. And as you exhale, you're coming all the way back down. Your inhale, pushing the floor away from you, both with hand and foot. Exhale to come down. 
For one more inhale as you lift. And then exhale, derotate. Downward facing dog. Vinyasa, down dog or child's pose, your choice. Maintain wherever you are that even rhythm of breath. So we'll take one more little sequence of active and then we'll bring some passive range of movement to the hips to allow the muscles to stretch and release after they've worked really hard. Just like we would in any strength or conditioning workout. Come all the way back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, feel the resistance band. Inhale, raise the right leg to the sky. Exhale, bend the right knee and open up the hip. So you're coming into a scorpion dog. You've inhaled here. And then as you exhale, your right knee all the way outside the body as you come into plank. The knee comes into the center. And then you inhale it all the way back to where you started. So you're drawing a massive circle, exhaling for half of the circle, and then inhaling for the other half of the circle. Last one, exhale, knee to the outer elbow. Inhale, back to scorpion. As you exhale, your next breath, pigeon pose. Tuck under the back toe and take the back knee back. Bring the fingertips to the floor in front of you. Open up through the chest. Press the floor away from you with your right shin. Push the floor away from you with your left shin. And if this hurts your right knee, come all the way over on your back and take a uh, thread the needle. Eye of the needle, sorry. So you'll have your right ankle and your left thigh, your left thigh in towards you. Take a breath in here. And then exhale, move the right hand a little further forward and take the left hand around the outer edge of the right knee. The right hand now to the outside edge of that same right knee. And then pull the right knee with your left hand and push into that knee with the hand. And sneak your right hand back behind you towards your left hip. Press the shins into the floor. Squeeze the inner thighs. We are not hanging out here. This is an active stretch, so these muscles are still working, even though we're creating a bit of length in them at the same time. Take one more breath, and as you exhale, derotate. Tuck under the back toe, downward facing dog. So same little sequence on the other side. I think I'll turn around. I've got no space with the wall. As you inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale, bend and open that left hip. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, slow and controlled, left knee comes to the outer edge of your left elbow, then to the midline, and then you inhale all the way back to scorpion dog. So you're exhaling, working the outer hip, the outer waist. You're inhaling front of hip, front of waist, back to outer hip, outer waist. This is the last one. As you exhale, come forward. Inhale to lift and twist. And then exhale, left foot forward into pigeon. Tuck under the back toes. Bring your fingertips to the floor. Press into the left shin. Press into the right shin. Push the floor away from you. Hug the inner thighs. Notice if this hurts your knee. If it does, come over onto your back. If the knee feels fine, bring the right hand, cup it right the way around the outer edge of this left knee. Then the left hand to the side. And then push the left knee into the hand of the right and pull back with that right hand as you twist. And then sneak that left hand behind you towards your right hip. So we have this push and pull sensation at this left knee. And we're still pushing both of the shins down into the floor. And we're feeling that in the outer hip space. It's strong. 
And then as we exhale, we de-rotate. Bring the hands to the floor. This time we're going to come all the way into a seated position. Now if you know that sitting cross legs feels uncomfortable for you, then raise yourself on a cushion or a block so that your pelvis is elevated. Right shin crosses either in front of left shin or right ankle on top of left knee. Left foot is underneath or behind right knee. So we're just in file up pose. Take a breath in, reach the hands to the sky. As you exhale, fold forwards, reach the hands as far forward as they'll go. It doesn't matter where they go. Allow the head to hang heavy, allow the elbows to come towards the floor or onto the thigh, the shins, wherever feels comfortable. And then allow these outer hip muscles to soften and let go. And we've worked these muscles really hard and for the full length of the class so far now's our chance to stretch them. Where you feel that sensation in the right hip Breathe into that space. And as you breathe out as much as you can, allow that pelvis, that hip, sorry, to soften. And the muscles and the outer edge of the hip that are feeling tight to let go. And then slowly walk your hands back. Coming all the way back up to seated, take your left hand to the outer edge of the right knee. The right hand behind you, press the sit bones down as you lengthen the spine. And then as you breathe out, just take a twist to the right. Close off the eyes. Feel a sense of energy as we ground the sit bones and lift the crown of the head. And breathe wide into the rib space and allow us to use the out breath to get a little more twist. And then inhale back to the center, bring the right hand out to the side, press the floor away from you with your right hand. Inhale, lift the left hand to the sky, gaze at it. And then exhale, allow that left hand to travel towards the floor. The right elbow can come down to the floor or can stay lifted. Or you alternatively, you can bring the forearm onto a block. Breathe into the left side of the body. As we stretch that continuum of outer hip now into the outer side of the body. And then inhale, come all the way back. And exhale, swap sides. So left shin in front or left ankle on top of right knee. Left foot underneath, sorry, right foot underneath left knee or just um, behind it. And then from here, inhale, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, hinge forward, reach forward as much as your body will allow. And then soften, let it go. So remember, it doesn't matter how far forward you fold. Very often, it's not the muscles that get in the way, it's the, it's the bones. So you just come forward as much as your body needs so that you can feel a stretch in your outer hip. And so now we're working into the left outer hip. Now breathe into that left out of hip space. Asking the muscles to soften and let go as you stay here for a little longer. In fact, it might not even just be that left out of hip that's hanging on to tension. 
the right side might be hanging on for it. I'm just checking. Slowly press the hands into the floor and come back up to seated. And bring the right hand to the outer edge of the left knee and the left hand behind you. Press the sit bones down as you lengthen the spine. And then exhale as you twist from the waist. Feeling that sense of grounding into the earth with the sit bones. And lifting and lengthening from the crown of the head. Come back to the center. Stretch your left hand out to the floor and to your left. Push the floor away from you with your left as you inhale the right hand to the sky. Look at it. And then exhale, allow the right hand to pass by the right ear, maybe the left elbow to come to the floor. That's totally optional. From here, keeping the right hip grounded into the earth. Breathe into the right side of the body. Allow the body now to continue that release of the muscles from the outer hip into the outer side of the body. And then inhale, come all the way back to the center. Exhale, turn around, come and lie down on your back. Bring your feet mat distance apart and allow the knees to drop in together. Just to give your spine a moment to settle into the floor. With your hands on your belly, make that space under your hands soft. Take a big breath into that belly space and allow it to fill up like a balloon. And as you exhale, if it feels good in your body, extend your legs out in front of you and bring your palms to face up by your side. Shavasana. Take a big breath into the body. And as you exhale, let it go with a sigh. Take a big breath in. As you sigh it out, feel the release of the hips, particularly the space we worked real hard. One more. And then surrender. Allow the earth to support you. Allow the body to feel fully supported, soft. Allow the breath to return to its natural flow. Allow the mind to follow the breath as it comes and as it goes. No control, just observation and singular focus.
Before you bring any movement back into the body, just take a moment to tune in, to check in. And to notice how your body is feeling now. We've worked the outer hips hard. We've pretty much followed a conditioning flow. But it hasn't been without breath. It hasn't been without consciousness. So the breath was able to move in and out of body with the same control as is in the case of any flow. Allowing us not only to strengthen the body, but to calm the mind. To work the yin as well as the yang. Slowly bring movement to your fingers and toes. Wrist your ankles. Walk the knees in towards the chest. And give yourself a massive hug. A little rock from side to side over those muscles that you've worked so hard today. This flow you can continue to work with many times so that you can continue to feel, to build, to strengthen those muscles of the outer hips, ready for your run, ready for your bike, ready for life. When you're ready, roll all the way onto your right hand side, keep the eyes closed and push yourself up to find a comfortable seat. And bring the palms down for a sense of grounding or up for a sense of energy or uplift. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, bow the head. Namaste. Thank you for taking time to join me in my practice today. I hope to see you again soon.